I am going to load balance or current balance these four batteries. Now, I just went through and charged up all the batteries. They are at 100% state of charge. So in a parallel battery configuration, we are going to be connecting the positives to the positives and then separately the negatives to the negatives on a parallel configuration. That's going to allow the bank of batteries to remain at 12 volts, but it will increase the capacity of the amp hours to 400 amp hours or more equivalently to 4,800, probably more like 49, 5,000 watt hours. And as I had mentioned before, the batteries come with two, well actually they come with four different lengths of screws. They're all M8 cables. So 516 cables M8, but one is longer than the other and other. The longer one is for the ability to be parallel or even series these batteries together. So we're going to use the short one at the far left end for starters on both ends. And then we're going to run the long ones between each of the batteries. I am connecting these batteries together through a 12 inch cable. These are, these are four gauge cables, all pure copper on both the lugs as well as the cable, copper inside the cable itself. So I do have the red ones and I do have the black ones. Again, they're, they're all pure copper, both with the lugs and the cabling itself. The one thing to be mindful on with most of your lugs, there's going to be a high and a low level of the lug. Don't do what I just did. I attempted to put this lug on top of the previous lug in this configuration, which meant the, uh, the terminal screw wasn't long enough. So make sure you have it in the same orientation as the previous uh, cable lug. And then of course the last battery will be I'll be using the shorter stub because I don't need the extra length unlike the two connections in the middle. That's the positive side. I'm going to go ahead and hook up the negatives and when I do hook up the negatives that's going to allow the bank to begin balancing itself out. So I'm going to take some voltage uh, readings across each battery first before I hook up the negatives. So the first battery read 13.63 volts. I'm going to write that down on that piece of paper that I have stuck to the top of each battery. That way I have a baseline to start off with. The second battery comes in at 13.64 volts onto the third battery. The third battery comes in at 13.59 volts, slightly lower than the other two. On to the fourth battery. And the fourth battery comes in at 13.61 volts. So I'm going to hook these guys up in uh, parallel at this time by connecting up to ca uh, negative cables. And then we will let it, as I call it at work, bake to allow the bank to self-balance itself. And then we will check, recheck all the voltages. Because they are almost close to their full state of charge already, it shouldn't take too long to balance them out. I'm interested to see what the third and fourth battery do coming in a couple of couple hundred tenths of an amps, amps less than uh, the average for the first two batteries. So we're going to allow the whole bank to balance out for a period of time and see what we come up with. Again, this is a parallel to parallel setup. So we are looking at the reds to the reds and the blacks to the blacks. And with me hooking up this fourth battery, the battery bank is fully connected, interconnected, and parallel to give me 400 amp hours of juice off of a 12 volt system. So like I said, we're going to let this thing balance for a period of time, and then we're going to come back and check the overall voltage of each uh, battery and then the overall uh, voltage of the entire bank. But before I do allow that period of time to allow the bank to bounce out, I want to see what the overall voltage is. The overall voltage of the battery bank is currently 
or 16, sorry about that, 13.62, 13.61 volts DC. That's where we're at right now. Let's see how it goes after we do some, uh, some balancing amongst the four batteries. And after about 12 hours or so of baking, we are about ready to check the voltage on these uh, battery bank to see where we are exactly for our next test. So we're gonna start with the overall bank voltage. So 12 hours ago, the bank read 13.61 to 13.62 volts. Now it reads 13.61 volts. So it did come down just a hair, but I am more curious on what each of the individual batteries are now ranking. I'm going to disconnect the batteries from the bank and check the voltage on each battery to see if there was any improvement particularly with this battery here that came in at 13.59 volts and this battery here that came in at 13.61 volts. Starting with battery number one, which came in yesterday at 13.63 volts after being topped off individually from the rest of the bank. Battery number one is now at 13.6 volts. Battery number two that came in at 13.64 volts prior to balancing is now at 13.61 volts. Battery number three, which was the lowest of the bank at 13.59 volts, now reads 13.61 to 13.62. Now it's staying closer to 16.61, so we're just going to round it down to 13.61 volts. And battery number four that came in at 13.61 to 13.62 volts now comes in at a solid 13.61 volts. So a slight decrease, but there's a slight decrease on bank or battery number one and battery number two, just the same. The biggest improvement was battery number three, where it was 13.59 uh, volts. And now it is at 13.61 volts. The batteries, ladies and gentlemen, are balanced. After about 12 hours of baking, and if you do a little bit of math, so 13.6 volts across the bank at 400 amp hours equates to 5,440 watt hours of juice. So there you have it. That is how you balance out voltage across a bank of batteries. Now check out the next video where I do a lowdown of this bank to see how long she can run a 1300 watt space heater.